Sure, I don't want my voice to sound too um, too low, but I don't want it to be too high either. But um, yeah, we definitely we got a good, good, wonderful, beautiful word on this morning, and in this word this morning, we're gonna look at a king. We're gonna look at the words of a king who got a prophecy from his mother, and let us understand what his mother told him, because these are the things that destroy kings and princes. If it can destroy kings and princes, it can destroy anybody. So let us just glean and understand this word coming out of Proverbs 31 and 1 through 6. But before we get in here, let us understand our way. Let us read in Ecclesiastes 7 through 23 through 29, and let's understand what's going on in this text. All this have I proved by wisdom. I said I will be wise but it was far from me. So we see that wisdom is far from us. We want to search out things. We want to know the knowledge to things. But remember, wisdom is far from us. But we can get to know it. We can get to know it by getting acclimated, getting close to God. This is how we get close to wisdom and to understand our way. That which is far off and exceeding deep, who can find it out? I applied my heart to know and search and to seek out wisdom and the reason of things. So this is what we need to be doing. We need to be getting acclimated with the word. We need to be searching out things to know the meaning and to reason, to know the reason of things and to know the wickedness of folly, even of foolishness and madness. So this man wanted to get to know evil. He wanted to get to know the meaning of it. He wanted to get to know the meaning of foolishness and madness just so he can understand wisdom. And I find more bitterness than death the woman whose heart is snares and nets and I her hands as bands. Whoso pleases God shall escape from her, but the sinner shall be taken by her. This is deep right here. This man wanted to understand wisdom and understand, and he found that the woman was more bitter than anything. And this is deep right here. And her hands as bands. It's, this is so deep right here. I got to read this again. And I find more bitter than death the woman whose heart is snares and nets. So he said her heart's is a trap and nets and her hands as bands. Whoso pleases God shall escape from her but the sinner shall be taken by her. See, now we need to understand all the way from in the gardens, the woman's, you know, allowing of Satan to be used by her. Remember, the woman was in the transgression. So what am I saying here? This is good wisdom right here for to us to understand that us leaving off with these different type of women, you got to understand God knows our ways. God knows what is our most vulnerable points in us. We got to understand, just like this text says, and we're going to get into more text. God will keep you from being took away by the woman, by that spirit, by that seduction, by that lasciviousness, running around being with all these different women, women running around being with all these different men. We don't really know what you're tangling yourself up with. That's why God calls us to be one with our wife. It all has a beautiful, wonderful meaning. Should I read that again, Lemuel? Did you get that? Yeah. Uh, yeah, read it, read it again one more time. I'm trying to... <laughs> so we got some more supporting scripture to back this up, man, but this is deep. This man wanted to know wisdom. This man said, all I have approved by wisdom, I said, I will be wise. All this have I proved by wisdom, I said, I want to be wise. I will be wise. But it was far from me. So he said he wanted to be wise, but wisdom was far from him. That which is far off and exceedingly deep, who can find it? I apply my heart to know and to search and to seek out wisdom and the reason of things and to know the wickedness of folly, even foolishness and madness. And I find more bitter than death the woman whose heart is a snares and nets, 
and her hands as bands. Whoso pleases God shall escape from her, but the sinner shall be taken by her. Man, that's deep right there. This is why we have to wait on the Lord for all things. When we're out just going woman to woman and, and pleasing that spirit, that seductive spirit that's leading us down a hole, it can be detrimental. I've seen, heard many testimonies of people losing houses, people losing their lives, people losing their careers, people losing family members, people losing all kinds of things over this word right here. Behold, this have I found, said the preacher, counting one by one to find out the account. So this man went searching one by one because he wanted to know the meaning. He wanted to find out the account. So he searched it one by one, which he yet says, which yet my soul seeketh. But I found not one man among thousands have I found, but a woman among those have I found not. So we see that all of these things, everybody that fell victim to the grasp of this woman, he said he found a whole bunch of men there, and but out of it, he didn't find one woman. <laughs> Amen. All of these people have been destroyed, but he has found not one woman. Lo, this only have I found that God has made man upright, but they, made, they, but they have sought out many inventions. So what the saying is men have sought out many inventions, but it's God who makes you upright. And that's one of the things I can say about me, you know, when we got to get into this word. In my life of living, I was, you know, a fornicator, running around, drinking, smoking, having sex, doing all of that. But when God came to my life, God give you that spirit of faithfulness. He give you the power of correctiveness. That's a beautiful gift right there. Just like it says right here when we go back into this word. And her hands is bent. Whoso pleases God shall escape from her. But the sinner shall be taken by her. So we running out sinning. We think we slick because we got all this money and cars and we going house to house, sleeping with girl to girl. You don't know the trap that you're in. You do not know the trap that you're in. And I used to be around some people who had that spirit so bad that when a woman walk in, they can't even be still. This is how deep that spirit is. I have we've been in the car with people and they turn their neck to look at a female and wreck the car. <laughs> as we get, yep. as we get yeah. in this word, let us understand what thus says the Lord. I know this is a touching topic for some people, but we got to understand our way. We got to do like this man said. I wanted to count one by one so I can know the count. I want to know the count on things. I want to get next to wisdom. I want to search the deep things. Amen. You want to respond to that, Brother Lemuel? That's deep right there, man. <laughs> yeah, it's deep. Uh, it's the word wisdom, you know. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. uh, we're, how can I put it? I, I I've always been a C person, the person to see. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And when I was growing up, you know, I would look at that person. You know, how is she, you know, how's her lifestyle, uh, who she hang out with, you know. And uh and then that's the way I go from there, you know. And I know I didn't want in the trouble, you know what I'm saying? Right, right. I didn't want to in trouble in my life, you know, because, you know, just growing up was bad enough, you know, what's going on in the world, you know, and, uh, yeah, but like the God, you know, being, being, in, being in church, I learned a lot. You know, I think that helped me out a lot, being part of the church. It's more humble being in the church, around church people, around People who, um, you know, grown ups who've been been married for forty years, thirty years, you know, they right. give you advice, that, you know, and that, that 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 helps out a lot, you know. And then I had the advice from you know people, you know, well, 
she's okay, but you know, is other problems. You know what I'm saying? So, but uh, yep, Amen. that's the word wisdom. Amen. That's, that's beautiful. It is. It is. And I like that. And I like that too, because you said, Lemuel, because just like this word is telling us, when we get to know wisdom and know the account, God will keep us. Remember, God is wisdom. God brings us into all wisdom, not nothing else. That's why it says at the end of that verse that man sought out many inventions, but he haven't sought out nothing that can make him upright. But we know King Jesus will make us upright. We know that. And when he makes you upright, that uprightness is going to keep you from committing fornication. That upright is going to keep you from defiling yourself. And this is what the word is letting us know. When we search out wisdom, you know, there's a price for that. There's a beautiful, wonderful gift that's that you're going to be repaid for that. And the Lord lets us know, and you know, Revelation 3.18, I counsel thee to buy from me gold that's been tried in the fire so that you may be clothed in white raiment. And pray that you can get eye salve so that you can see. See, what come with that eye salve to open your eyes up. It's going to open your heart up. And when your heart get opened up, man, that's a beautiful gift from the Lord. To be able to see what you're amongst. To be able to see what you're up against. A lot of people are walking around blind and they can't see that. This is why we have to come to the Lord. So right here, just, you know, just so we can understand. That's why you be hearing the old timers and you hear people saying, they have found their soulmate because God has brought their soulmate to them. Remember, the man's inheritance as money is passed down from his father, but he sold that finance his wife is given by the Lord. Remember that. So let us look right here at Proverbs 18 at 22. Whoso findeth a wife findeth the good thing and obtaineth favor of the Lord. See, when you find your wife that's in the Lord, and because the Lord has sent her to you, you find a good thing and you obtain favor with the Lord. That faithfulness is beautiful. That's all it's about. It's about faithfulness. It's about allowing the Lord to lead you. And, and that faithfulness, you obtain favor with the Lord. Amen. Amen, brother. Well, uh, well the point you were saying, you know, if you find a wife, you have favor with the Lord. That's amen. You know, because you know God uh, sent you right. to have a wife. Right. But there's so many of us, you know, we we probably, you know, you have a, a wife or a husband who's faithful to God. But, but you know, the wife or husband's not too faithful. Right. You know, yeah. And... and mm -hmm. No, I, I hear and I hear you. And we go through challenges when we're in in that in that way. But you know, even in that stand, just because the the partner is not, that don't cause you to not be. You hear me? You continue to be faithful, and God will work wonders in your life. Because one thing about one thing about the Lord, when it's from the Lord, the Lord is not going to send you nothing unfaithful. You hear me? The Lord done already searched it out. See that and sometimes that's what we have to look at. We have to look at: Are we choosing? Are we choosing our spouse or is this spouse really from God? Because you, when you really receive a spouse from God, they're going to really line up. Because God, remember remember what it says, whoso findeth a wife has found favor with God. When God sends you that spouse and you have that favor from God, that favor is going to be intact. You can believe that. <laughs> that favor is going to be intact. Trust me, he didn't already search it out because he already know our days. He already know our road ahead. God's not going to send you nothing that's going to kill you. God's not going to send you nothing that's going to harm you. I can't hear you, Lemuel. Are you speaking? I can't hear you. I think you're on um, things on mute. Yeah. Go ahead, yeah, you're right. Yeah, I see that all through my lifetime. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, faithful. Right. You know, they're faithful to God, but they husband and wife. Right. They faithful. I mean, I'm talking about their being married for sixty yeah. years. And my grandparents, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, you know, and they, you know, like they, it's not they didn't have much. That's what the point was, you know, like today we worry about we don't have this, we don't have that, you know. Right. 
but they just didn't have much. But they loved each other, mm. and they went on and just went on through life. That's you know, not complaining. You know, they really did. And now I, I just sit back and think about you know how how marriage is so different today. Right, right, right. You know, yeah, yeah, it's so totally different. Right. But it was about you know love, loving each other. Real love. You know. Yeah, real loving. Yeah. Oh my goodness, real loving. Now that's yep. contentment. You know, to be content, uh, to have your spouse, to be content, to be in love, to be faithful. Whatever you guys have, man, that's true love. That and that's the type of love that I'm talking about. That only comes from the Lord. The world don't teach you that, or the world don't give you that. It's no, the world don't give you that. Yeah, right. Now is you know, I was hearing the other day about uh, marriages. Um, less people is getting married now. And I think what it is is just the uh, economy and people are more independent right. now. Right. You know, right. yeah. People, people are living by people are living by the world standards, and this is what yeah. we said. And this is what we're talking about in the in the word. You know, just like we was just talking about at Proverbs eighteen and twenty two, who so finds the wife has found a good thing and have find favor from the Lord. See, find this don't change. The word don't change. So finding that wife in the Lord is continuing to have that favor. Is what you want, regardless of what the spirit of the world is doing. Because God wants us to be one with our wife and our spouse. God wants us to come into that unity and that faithfulness. That's a big, that's a big thing. And that's what you're seeing. People don't want to be married. People want to be independent. People want to be their own this, their own that, which comes with all that other rhetoric. It comes with all that other stuff. All that other stuff God don't want. God don't want you to have all that other stuff. God wants you to have your spouse that sent from him. He wants you to obtain favor from him. He wants you to have that faithfulness. He wants you to have that righteousness. Man, that's a beautiful thing when you got people looking to you, kids looking to you where they can grow. If they seeing you out there with no spouse and you want to be independent, you want to be the male and the female and you up and down and every which way, can't nobody learn from that. Can't nobody grow. Can't nobody grow from you from that. You can destroy people with that type of behavior. <laughs> uh, so let us yeah, know. yeah, yeah. You can destroy, yeah, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Let us get in this word now. Let's look at this word right now of King Lemuel that his mother taught him, the woman taught him. Proverbs thirty-one, one through six, the words of King Lemuel. Now this word right here, Pastor brought this to me when I was incarcerated over eight years ago brought this word to me from the Lord. It was beautiful because this was a thing that I was doing. The words of King Lemuel, the prophecy that his mother taught him. What my son and what the son of my womb and what the son of my vows. Give not thy strength unto women nor thy ways to that which destroyeth king. Hallelujah. We see what destroyeth kings. Women destroyeth kings and look what else. It is not for kings, O Lemuel, it is not for kings to drink wine, nor for princes strong drink. Now, remember, we hear people, well, Jesus did this, Jesus did that. They always try to justify, you know, something going on to, to continue in their behavior. But this is the word, too. It is not for kings, O Lemuel, it is not for kings to drink wine, nor for princes strong drink, lest they drink and forget the law and pervert the judgment of any of the afflicted. Now, being impaired, you hear me? Being impaired is a, is a, is a, is a bad thing. You can pervert judgment. And it says right here, you can forget the law, which is the word, and pervert the judgment of any of the afflicted because you ain't unstable. Well, you unstable, you know what I mean? You unstable in your mind. You unstable in your behavior. So how are you going to uphold righteousness but you unst <laughs> unstable. You drink it all the time. You hear me? You're impaired. You're not in your right mind. Give strong drink unto them that is ready to perish, is what the word says. Give strong drink unto them that is ready to perish and wine to those that be of heavy hearts. A lot of people running around with heavy hearts, wanting to drown themselves out with alcohol, with wine, just so they don't have to cope with what their real situation is. I used to be like that. I used to be that. So when the Lord brought this word to me through the hands of that pastor, what I was telling you the other day, he dropped this gold watch in my hand. 
And then after that, he brought me this word. While I was incarcerated, it was a beautiful because I was beginning to learn the ways of the Lord. When two or more, it was from the Lord. This man had did something to me personally two times that God made me phone in on that I could see that it was him moving in my life. And sure enough, after he brought me this and the Holy Ghost fell on me in that cell, didn't drink no more. It's been over a year. Didn't do none of this chasing no women no more. Been over a year. So I know this word is true. Amen. This word is true right here. But remember, it said for kings, you count yourself a king, you got to be standing in, 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 in the right way that kings stand. You know, a lot of us out here calling yeah. ourselves kings and we're doing everything up under the sun. <laughs> Amen. Yeah, you got to be, as a husband, you got to be, uh, even a wife, you can't be like, well, I like the scripture that say with strong wine, you know, because you, you be all kinds of ways, you know, you know what to look at us, so you know. No. Well, about that time, it probably was different, you know, but I'm for the day, I just putting that example, but, uh, uh, yeah, but, <laughs> yeah, you know, but you, you'll never be come to a, you'll never be one. Right, it'll right. never be one. It'll always be, you see things this way, let's, you know, husband and wife you know, don't get along together because they want, she want to do it this way and he want to do it that way. You know? Right. But, uh, but I'm going to bring you back to, to Derek. I just believe that, uh, God, you know, uh, how can I put it? God give you a choice in life, and you have that opportunity to choose. You know, I, I just believe all oh, everybody's just not fit for marriage. Mm -hmm. I know the Bible states about marriage, but I don't think everyone is not fit for marriage. Right. And I think it is in the Scripture too. I think it's in in, in the New Testament right. about being separate. And uh, okay. but still, you still, you know, go serve God. You know, put God first in your life, either way. Okay. Yeah. And I and I and I like that, Lemuel, because I'm glad you picked that up, and we're thankful for the Holy Ghost because it do show us in Scripture, you know, about that. Just like the Apostle Paul, he was somebody that wasn't married, but the thing that we're speaking on is being faithful. He wasn't married, running around woman to woman. This is what this word is telling us about. You hear me? People being taken captive by the woman. People being destroyed by the woman. That's from fornication. You know what I mean? And this is this is the big difference. Yeah, you could be single. And you could be single and faithful. But many men can't be single and faithful. This is the word. Look at this right here. Let's look at Proverbs 22 at 14. The mouth of a strange woman is a deep pit. What is a strange woman? A strange woman is a woman other than your woman, than your wife. That's a strange woman. He that is abhorred, which means hate, of the Lord shall fall therein. So this word is letting us know the mouth of a strange woman is a deep pit. And he that is hated of the Lord shall fall therein. <laughs> this is a deep word. This is a deep word. Right? Yeah, yeah, shall fall. Yeah, yeah, I shall fall down here. Right? Amen. And I've seen that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So yeah. Right. You. Amen. The Lord loves you. He gonna keep you. <laughs> but if you're not walking in his ways, if you're not walking <laughs> in his faithfulness, you walk in the courts of the prince of this world, you're going to fall in that trap. You ain't going to have no power to resist that woman. And you're going to fall. This word right here is real. The mouth of a strange woman, like we said at the beginning, I've seen too many of them fall. Whether it be one woman playing both sides to get them both to shoot each other. I didn't seen it. So I know and understand what this word is talking about. The mouth of a shit yeah. is a deep pit. It's a deep and pit. The yeah. The Lord shall fall therein. Mm -hmm. So the Lord got power to keep you, just like He got power to give you up. This yeah. By being held from the throne, God is going to give you power to resist the temptation of the enemy. Remember, the woman was in the transgression. I'm not talking about all women. I'm talking about the women that are not faithful and that are not lining up with their husbands with the Lord. Mm -hmm. talking about, when we talk about men, we ain't talking about the men of God. 
We're talking about these people that are out here that are not living according to the scripture and according to the power of Christ, which we once used to be. This is the trap we was in. This is what it means to count it, search it one by one to know the count. You can go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Go ahead, brother. Go ahead, well, brother. Well, you know, and I'm on. Let me see. Yeah. Can you hear me? I hear you. Okay. No, I was just saying, you know, when I was growing up, we listened to radio station, you know, and it's all day, you know, soul station and Right. You know, they just bring all these songs about relationship. And, uh, and but when you just say, it, you know, I'm just saying, you know, I'm just having a little fun. Right. You know, the song called Clean Up Woman, you know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah, you, yeah, know, yeah. you know, you know, but right she died. Song, I think she yeah. really died a few years ago. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think about that song. Right. <laughs> and, you know, yeah, but songs, even if those songs, you know, it makes you think, you know. Yeah, it makes you think. Make you think back now. What yeah, you make you think, and at the time, you're like, oh, what are they talking about? And then you realize, oh, that's what they talking about. You know, you, right, know? Right. you don't want that and, in and your see, life. What, and see, that's what it's coming in, searching the meaning of wisdom. You know, mm -hmm. getting, getting the meaning of what's going on. Just like the search scripture that we were reading earlier, you know, in Ecclesiastes 7, you know, 26 through 29, 23 through 29, you know, getting the meaning of things. What's the real meaning of folly? What's the real meaning of wickedness? What's the real meaning of what's going on? And he let us know, you know, out of all those things he found more bitter was the woman. You hear me? Who, who, who basically was a trap. Her heart was a trap. Her hands was like bands. This is saying her potion. You know how many people running after women right now? It's her grips. You can't get out of her grips unless the Lord allows you. You remember that sensation, that lascivious beast, that lascivious demon? That demon will have you lustful. That demon will have you just, man, uncontrollable. You can't control yourself. And this is the type of power that the enemy has over people. This is why we got to seek the Lord so we can break loose from those bands. We could break loose from that. That's a wicked, that's an evil from on high. That is an evil from on high. It is. So yeah. Like Proverbs 20 at one. Wine is a mockery. I want to go back and forth because we're talking about King Lemuel, whose mother gave him a prophecy concerning women and concerning dreams. Now, remember, this is a woman who had this king out of her vows, out of her faithfulness. She's telling her son. She's not leaving her son in the dark. She's telling her son about her own gender. She's telling her son about strong drink. That's a beautiful thing to be able to trail your wonderful son, even if it is concerning, you know, your gender or, or something you used to do. You tell them wisdom. Tell them so they can escape from the bands. It's almost like my mother telling me about Jesus. Even yeah. though it wasn't for me then, I kept it with me and, and it came to me later. You hear me? Just think, yeah. just think mm -hmm. if his mother didn't tell him that. Just think if his mother didn't tell him about this. Proverbs 20 at 1. Wine is a mocker. Strong deep drink is raging. And whosoever is deceived thereby is not wise. Remember, we must have a sober mind. We must have a sober mind. So we can be used in this hour. God can't dwell in the unclean temple. This is what we're getting at. If our temples are unclean because we're not faithful, if our temples are unclean because we're pouring poison in it, God can't dwell in that. That's why he lets us know in his word, come out from amongst him and be separate and I'll receive you. Because when we're mm -hmm. amongst the defilement, you know what I mean? God, God is not going to get into us amongst the defilement so he can corrupt, you know, the vessel that he's trying to use. Because he ain't going to mm -hmm. corrupt himself. <laughs> He ain't gonna corrupt himself, <laughs> but the vessel he's trying to use, you know, that's why he wants us to come out from amongst that. And he'll receive us. He'll give us power. Amen. Yeah, yeah, amen. It's almost, you know, it's similar to like, all through the scripture you have this, you know, uh, like, what is it, Ruth and Naomi? 
you know, giving advice, you know. Was it mm-hmm. help me with someone looking for a husband? Yeah. Oh, they knew. Yeah, uh huh. Yeah. 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 Real yeah. So it's, yeah. 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 Mm. So, yeah. I just, yeah, but you're right about everything you say. You know, you got to be, come um, come out among them, you know. You know. Yeah, that's something that we that's something that we have to do. Now I'm just looking at, you know, what is required of us because you know, a lot of people are really not understanding and 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 it's okay. We're coming to bring understanding. So we can understand while we're here, the Lord is gonna get all that detestable stuff out of us. This is the word meaning that you have to be born again by the spirit. When God puts a new heart and a clean spirit in you, it's going to bring all that defilement out here, like the word tells us. So let us look at right here at Ezekiel 22 at 15 and 16. And I will scatter thee among the heathen, just like we are. We're scattered among the heathen, the people that don't know God and they trying to get to know God and disperse thee in the country. And I will consume thy filthiness out of thee. This is what we're saying. We're running around talking about we're of God and we're part of God, but we're still partaking in the defilement. There's no way God is in your vessel. God is a spirit. There's no way they're making their abode in your vessel and you're doing everything of the sun up under the everything in the world of defilement. This is where we got to check ourselves. We got to have wisdom. And thou shalt take thy inheritance in thyself in the sight of the heathen. What this is saying is you're going to take your inheritance of thyself in the sight of the heathen. The spirit is going to come get in you. Your inheritance is going to start now. It ain't going to start when you get into heaven. It's going to start now. God's going to get all that detestable stuff out of you, and you're going to be growing in your character. You're going to be growing in your faithfulness. You're going to be growing in your righteousness right now. So when the heathen see that, the heathen going to see something different about you. The heathen going to want to know your God. Because you ain't talking about it. Now you being about it. The heathen know what you used to be like. Now the heathen seeing you faithful. <laughs> the yeah. heathen seeing you walking upright. The heathen seeing you doing everything that's noble and that's righteousness. And that's good. The heathen want to be a part of that, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Right. It makes a difference. Yeah. Right. Because, you know, you know, it's true. I know a few people, they, they was kind of, you know, wasn't with God. Now they change, right? And all you hear now they just speak God's word, you know. <laughs> yeah, and then you say to yourself, "Oh, well, I wonder how can I get that?" <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Exactly. You know, you know what I'm saying. So, that's exactly what yeah, that's, that's saying you're going to receive your inheritance right now in front of the heathen, so that way the heathen can see you. And when he see all those detestable things is coming out of you, you ain't drinking, smoking no more. You ain't driving around reckless. You ain't putting people's life at, you ain't putting your own life at risk. People gonna wanna know what you partook of. That'd be a good chance to witness and make your life a living sacrifice, which is your reasonable service. That's what God requires from us. You can't do anything for God, but what we can do is make our bodies a living sacrifice which is our reasonable service mm-hmm. so we can help win others to the kingdom. Not by what we say, but by what we do. Amen. Yeah, yeah, you can't do anything for God. Yeah, it's by what you say, what you do. Yeah, yeah, and, uh, and I see that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I've got a couple more descriptions of me. We're about to hang up in about a minute, so we've got a couple more. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's a good word. Just for us to understand our way, you know, for us to count one by one and let us understand the account. You know, some people scared to, to preach a word if they're indulging in it. I see that. But when you can stand up strong to know our way and willing to let others know our way, we got to know this. I've seen too many deaths. Too many deaths of drinking, too many deaths of the woman, the strange woman. We need to know our yeah. way. Mm-hmm. 